There were times where I was ashamed of my parents' language. There was a time where I would feel like an outsider, where they'd yell at me, like, go back to your country. And you know, like, I was born here, what are you talking about? Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Yi Chang Hees. And over here at Asia One, we had the exclusive invite to attend the Disney Plus Showcase content that was happening like earlier this month actually, like last day of November, 1st December. And they had a lot of announcements. Um, some of them were Marvel, some of them were Korean dramas. And they also showcased um, one of the upcoming Disney Pixar movies, which is Elemental. I think you guys might have seen some trailers out and about. It depicts this fire girl and this water guy getting together and like falling for each other. We had the chance to speak to, you know, the director of the movie, Peter Son, who has worked with Pixar for a while. And most recently, you might recognize him as the voice of Socks, like the robot cat. I think it's a robot on Lightyear. And he, he's here, you know, I mean, or rather we met him at the showcase to talk about mainly the inspiration for his film. And he actually told us a really moving story about his parents uh, who are immigrants and how he actually also came to be in this line and how his parents felt about it. So we're just going to roll the clip and you can watch it for yourself. Okay, so you've mentioned that Elemental and like the theme of being different, of being, you know, apart, um, are inspired by your parents and your yeah. childhood experience. So were there any incidents growing up that made you feel like you stood out because, you know, you are the child of immigrants? Yeah. Like, did people make you feel that or c could you elaborate? Yeah, yeah I mean, Growing up, growing up in New York on, in, at that time in the late 80s, early 90s, it was all about that at every angle. There were times where I was ashamed of my parents' language. There was a time where I would feel like an outsider where they'd yell at me like, go back to your country. And you know, like, I was born here, what are you talking about? And so there were those times where you felt disconnected from both places, from your parents' home and from the home that you're living in. But also at the same time, there were so many beautiful times of like, Oh my God, I love my parents' culture. I love the culture that I, I, that I grew up with. Uh, and then also those moments where you do find your tribe and you fit in to the city that you are living in. And so it was all those juxtapositions for sure. And those memories are still very vivid for you, like even though you were a child at the time? Uh, yeah, I think it's just growing up in a place like Pixar where you're just telling stories all the time to each other. And so you'll stumble upon things, like my brother and I just continue to tell stories about childhood. We're just nostalgic people. <laughs> okay, um, so the next inspiration for the film was actually your relationship, um, romantic yeah. relationship. You say your parents wanted you to marry a Korean. Right. Um, how do you convince them otherwise? Because Asian parents, you know. <laughs> yeah, they are hardcore. My grandmother's dying words were literally like, marry Korean. Ugh. And like she literally passed away. Like I was with like, our, you know, all our families and uh, hearing this and um, it took empathy. It's so funny, like they were so against it for for a couple years, and I was in California and my parents were in New York, but, um, um, and I was doing a little bit of brokering with my brother who would ask them questions, but once they met my wife, girlfriend at the time, my father switched immediately. Once he met her and understood who she was, my dad had this empathy that totally opened the door, you know? My mom had a little bit longer of a time uh, to turn, but I think that empathy was the key. What do you think um, won them over? Um, I think it was them understanding who her parents were, that they were very much like them in terms of class and the type, they were good people, and that, like, they're totally, for my father, originally, really easy. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, um, no, thank you. Okay, so the next question I have is, regardless of where we all grew up in, yeah. Asian parents have very similar definitions of success, yes. especially when it comes to career, yes. lawyers, doctors, engineers. Yes. yes. How did they react to you wanting to go into animation? Because I'm, I'm sure that's not at the top of their list for what they want for you. No, you know what, it was really hard early on, but now I feel like it's changed in, in Korea now, that the, going into the arts is so much more open, but at the time, it was either naivete that they didn't know that world, because only the tracks were all those things. It was a war for me growing up. Like, it was just like, you know, anytime I did a drawing, my mom would like tear up the paper or break pencils and like, this is not your future, you can't do this. Oh dear. And uh, what's so interesting was that like she was so violent about it. She was so angry about it that I didn't understand. But years later, you know, I found out that she was also an artist and that because she was a woman in Korea, they, they wouldn't give her money to go to art school. They only gave the son. And so she had this 
part of her life that I didn't know about. And all of a sudden, like once I knew that, this empathy happened again. I'm like, oh my God, mom, that's why you didn't want me to draw is because you knew it wasn't a future for you because that's what they had told you. But it was really hard, but it just took a lot of communication to get past it, you know? Wow, um, that's, that's such a moving story. Um, the last question I have actually is to follow up on that. Now that you're in this line, do you yeah. feel like you are helping your mother to live out her dreams and, and what she couldn't achieve? Boy, that is a great question. Um, I don't know if it was about fulfilling her dreams, but I know that she was proud, you know, like, and she never really said that growing up, but, you know, before she passed away, she was very, very clear about what she was grateful for. And uh, um, um, part of that was that, you know, we sharpened each other. That's how she puts it, that like, we fought a lot, but we sharpened each other to, for us to all get better. And uh, um, I always appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Brian, that was an intense load of questions. That was really sweet of you. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We really couldn't ask a lot because, you know, what we only know about the film is it takes place in this um, elemental world where it's really being inhabited by humanoid versions of elements. So, you know, it's earth, uh, a wind, fire and water and in this world fire apparently seems to be the outcast of the group because they can't seem to gel with people and they can't seem to interact well with the world and it's about how opposites attract and what happens when you know two people from different worlds different cultures come together as you can tell you know it is also very much inspired by his life because he did say that um, he fell in love with someone who was not Korean and also drawn from his own experience as the child of immigrants and I cannot wait actually to see, you know, how these experiences actually fold into the story and bring it to life. Well, the movie is not going to be released for a while to be really honest. Um, I think right now the release date is about somewhere in June next year, but I'm pretty sure like in I guess two months leading up to the film, there are going to be a lot more information, there are going to be a lot more trailers coming out, so look out for that. So that's it for today's episode of E Junkies. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.